Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of LedNet Gaming. Today we're going to continue our fleet management series and we're going to talk about how to build the perfect cargo running fleet. Cargo running is a great option because you can invest into it on ships without having to primarily be a space trucker. There's a ton of cargo ships out there and even more ships that you could use for cargo. You don't really need to have a big fleet either. As we're going to cover in a moment, my ideal cargo fleet design only has six ships. This is not the be-all end-all list either. Hopefully you can see the logic behind why I picked what I did and arranged things as I did, and then you could use this in your own thinking and planning for your cargo fleet. So let's go ahead and talk about the three types of cargo class. You have mass cargo, protected cargo, and data. There are also some exceptions here, like the Banu Merchantman. I'll also bring up the Privateer, which isn't a cargo runner, and that's the argument I'll make now. Also not covered today, people. Yes, they are cargo, but we're going to talk about them in a separate video as their own line and profession. Up first is mass cargo. These are the whole series of ships, and they're somewhat limited because they can only dock in space, and they're limited in what kind of cargo they can carry. However, they do cover the range from incredibly cheap and small starter ships that you can fly by yourself all the way up to capital ships. Mass cargo hauling is probably only going to happen in orgs, aside from some enterprising safe space solo haulers. Yes, they've got massive profits, but they also carry massive risk. There's also going to be a lot of NPC mass haulers driving around whole series ships to attract pirates and other things like that, as well as move goods around the verse on the NPC side. So expect to see a lot of these, but don't necessarily expect them to always have human pilots. The next class is protected cargo, and these I think are going to be most commonly flown by players. It's unrestricted. They could be used for a lot more than just cargo, but they are cargo ships in design. They can dock in space or head down to the planet if they choose for better opportunities. They have small crews and are typically very robust ships. The last group is data. It's currently an unknown commodity. There's very few current options, but the likelihood that future subcomponent options are going to allow data runners to utilize just about any ship with an upgraded computer make this a fantastic potential way to start for a lot of solo players. So let's go ahead now and talk about building the bulk carrier fleet. Anyone can become a mass cargo hauler by simply purchasing a whole series ship. This is great because it means a player could purchase a single cargo ship like this and play cargo loops while not being a dedicated space trucker. The problem, however, with these is their attractiveness to pirates. Ideal targets here for you are going to be the whole B or C, with the C only going to players who want to make real cash as a cargo mover, but not really as their primary profession. Generally speaking, these should be purchased in-game with in-game credits, though the C would be a cash option in my opinion. The B has the same cargo capacity currently as a large number of other ships in different classifications, meaning that those are probably better suited, but the whole B is going to be very inexpensive, so you'll be able to move a lot of SCU very cheaply, which is good if you're looking for bulk carrier. Next up are the dedicated cargo runners. Diversity here is the key. Look to focus in three different areas. First, enough bulk cargo to make it worth the while. In other words, a big cargo ship. The Caterpillar here is tied for first place, and it does have a bigger crew requirement, but if CIG delivers modularity like originally pitched, that modularity is going to reign supreme. It's one tough nut to crack with good firepower and a fantastic QT drive stock, making this a great choice. Next is the Hercules C2. I want to say this is the best choice. A crew of two is smaller than even a Freelancer, and it has more cargo than the cat as pitched. Best of all, you can transport multiple of any military vehicle, which is something the cat certainly can't do. That gives you a lot of opportunity to haul a lot more than just boxes. The Hercules M2 gives up a little bit of cargo, gains one more crewman, but this is really actually probably the best choice because you gain additional armor. If armor mechanics come into the game as pitched, tied with the shields and extra firepower, this is a solid choice. I rate it the best pick. Problem is, it costs 100 more than the C2 pre-release. Last is the Banu Merchantman. 
We're going to talk a lot more about this one later, but know that it would fit into this group very happily. The next consideration is something for smaller, more dedicated cargo. You can't always run a Mazen hauler. They attract attention, and sometimes the best routes call for something that gets in and out easily. Reality is the Star Runner could very well be the best choice here, if it gets the 90 SCU pitched. The Star Runner also has great server banks and is supposed to be very fast and hard to detect. It looks like we'll see later this year, so if it happens, we'll know soon enough. The Freelancer Max is also a solid choice as well. Great weapons, armor, and shields, 120 SCU. Drives like a bus, just like the Star Runner, no one's going to wrongly guess what you're up to. Larger than either of those options, but a perfect middle ground is the Taurus. Cheap like the Max, but rumored to have much more cargo, probably around 150 to 200 or more SCU. Both the Freelancer Max and Taurus fill a niche for players who are not going to the upper levels. Great if you're planning to do more than cargo run full time. However, if you plan to be a space trucker for the most part, these should just be skipped. The Star Runner gives you data and SCU, while expensive, if this is your primary profession, it's worth sinking that money into. Last is something discreet and for those really special missions. Sometimes it isn't how much of something you haul. Sure, a whole E full of slam sounds like one hell of a payday, but no one is ever going to buy enough of the stuff before you get swarmed by every pirate and UEE police patrol out there. Just imagine even bringing a holy with scrap into Spider. Yes, you're going to need something more discreet. This is where you have a lot of options because the truth is you're looking to be something you're not. However, there's better choices than others out there. For example, you might think the Space F-150, the Cutlass Black, is ideal for this. It would totally work, but it is fragile and everyone knows that. Is the Cutty Black one of the best values for your dollar? Absolutely but it isn't the best way to move very special cargo. One great option here is the Avenger Titan. It's a pretty quality fighter, it has eight easy to load SCU, making this a profitable ship with the right cargo. And it's protected enough that small time bandits are gonna have to worry about your skills at dogfighting, if they even bother scanning you down in the first place. It's dirt cheap and you can even pick one up as a starter game package. In fact, you really should, and consider that LTI on such a craft is pointless. They're replaceable. That's the point. My other craft of choice here is the Freelancer Miz. These are more expensive and are sold in limited quantities. However, they do boast some cargo space, but keep very strong shields and armor. Best of all, the pilot can fire the guns and its massive magazine of missiles. You turn like a bus, but your missiles don't. This thing reigns supreme in Arena Commander and you wouldn't think it. Surprisingly, it also has 28 SCU. The last category is data, which is a game loop that doesn't yet exist, but it will. And what's great about it is you could probably use a different class of ship just to pull it off. However, if you really want to bring in the cash with data, you'll need a dedicated ride. Currently, there's only two data runners concepted, the Star Runner and the Herald. We've already covered why the Star Runner is a great choice, but let's talk about the Herald for a moment. This ship is supposed to be a hard drive with rocket engines attached. Currently, ships in the verse are all relatively equal in speed, but I expect prior to launch, the Herald getting a little more juice from those engines. Honestly, the Star Runner is the choice to go with though, but the Herald is a lot cheaper. It's too soon to really say how to build these into your fleet, which is why the Star Runner holds the bag for now, because it does more than just data. Of course, there are those pesky exceptions. First, the Privateer. It's not a cargo ship. It is, however, arguably an end game option for cargo runners. Because why always be the middleman when you could enjoy both the discount price of the manufacturer and also all the profits as the seller? Here's what I don't like about it though. They're incredibly limited and rare, not to mention astronomically expensive. This is a ship you're going to have to buy with real money and a lot of it. It's gonna cost a ton of UEC to fill it up as well, both in gas but also just the items you're going to sell. If you do manage and choose to buy one of these, you're a space trucker for life, and you should only build a fleet to support and really rather reach operating your space mall. Which is why the better investment is the Banu Merchantman. Orders of magnitude less expensive, stylish if Geiger is your thing, same gimmick, and then some. Maybe. First the good. The Murchi is a cargo ship, originally pitched as a blockade runner, so it counts as a cargo mover, not just a reseller. 
Size 9 gun. Yeah, sometimes you can't go faster than the blockade. It has a crew of four, just slightly more than an M2 Hercules, but thousands of SCU more. The bad, though? CIG's all over the place with this one. It might not have a bazaar. It might not retain its cargo runner function. The price will probably rise. And if you're not into alien ships, yeah. There is a brother from another mother, though. There's one more outlier, so long as you like turtles. The Starfarer could provide you some sweet dual income with an added bonus. You don't have to pay for gas. The Space Turtle has an impressive and fun to look at cargo hold. Not the best defenses, but there are some turrets to help you out. Good news is, most will assume you're a floating gas station, not a cargo mover. Bad news, people regularly rob gas stations. We'll call it a wash. Crew accommodations are rough, but as captain you'll enjoy a chrome office and plenty of space with a window. Further bad news is terrible planetary flight performance, and we could expect that just to get worse. But if you overlook all of that, you will have a dual profession delivery. If cargo's bad, be a gas station. If gas is cheap, be a cargo ship. Either way, you win. So now let's put it all together. As we mentioned, you have three cargo fields to consider and build for. If you're an orc player, consider that bulk cargo running will bring you the best profits and you'll already have security to help you make it work. Solo cargo haulers, the vast majority, need to consider building the most robust fleet possible to serve their client needs, even if you are the client. You'll probably hire NPCs for turret security, which is fine, but those do cut into those profit margins, so keep the crew small. Here is my ideal target fleet as a space trucker. Now, this, like I said before, is not the be-all end-all, but I'm going to go over why this is my ideal fleet so you can see the rationale I applied and apply it to your own. First, the Titan and the Miz. This covers the discrete and small valuable cargo options. The Miz can attract some attention though, but it can fend for itself. So the Titan is a good thing to keep around when you really need to not be noticed. You might also need a game package, which the Titan can be, and you don't have to worry about losing it. The Star Runner gives you the best bang for your buck. Great SCU projected, allows you to run data as needed, rumored to have nice hiding spots, and the ability to evade even certain scanners when you need that sort of thing. The M2 is the bread and butter of your fleet. If you can only buy one, make it this or the Star Runner. This, however, is your daily flyer. Spend cash, get a good one. Hull C. Look. If you can't move a few thousand SCU of boxes or you're really a hauler, sometimes the market will allow you to have escorts. It's not too expensive, worth buying in game with credits. Last, the Banu Merchantman. Think of this as an end game direction to move towards, though if you have one and you keep it on mothballs until you're ready for it, owning one of these legit makes you a trucking tycoon with that fancy boardroom to meet your clients in. Let's go over a couple of options though. First up, you could easily replace the Titan with any number of ships. Same with the Miz, which I think is fantastic for this stuff, but a lot of people can't stand driving the space bus. I get it, a cutty black could hold down any of the first three spots in this fleet, and all three of them at once if need be. I just don't like that it's fragile. The Star Runner isn't much more expensive, and it gives you data and more SCU. The CAT and C2 are options in lieu of the M2, though if you go away from the M2, go directly to the CAT. CATs are well protected and offer more guns than either of the Hercs here. If CIG delivers the modularity, you might have a massive data runner option, or so many other things. CATs are also cheaper than the M2 and potentially have the same or more SCU. The whole series. You can opt for the smaller whole series and move bulk that way, or work your way towards the D and E, which bring mega profit. If you do, skip the Merchy. You're a middleman, but probably far wealthier than any Merchy captain ever will be. Of course, we have to talk about lifetime insurance considerations. I will direct these towards my model fleet, but you can run this logic to any other option. Everything but the Titan is probably worth having LTI for. The Miz is unique and limited though not like the Privateer Limited. Your uses for it also mean it's probably going to get some insurance claims on it. The Star Runner 2 faces a high likelihood of destruction, potentially the primary breadwinner of your fleet, that alone makes LTI worth it. And then there's the big three. Well, they're just not cheap. If you spend that kind of money on a ship in Star Citizen, I think you should work to make sure you always keep it. There's a lot about LTI we don't know yet. There's a lot about insurance we don't know yet. 
and this is why I would LTI them. But understand, there's plenty of argument why you shouldn't. LTI isn't everything, and it's an added hassle to apply, especially if you're new and you don't know how to navigate those ropes. So there you have it. We've covered the three different classes of cargo running, along with focuses for each of them. We looked at a model fleet and discussed why those ships are what they are, and mentioned some deviations to go with. What about your fleet? Did I miss a great option? What ships do you want to roll with? Let's talk about all of that in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you all next time.